तू ही राम तू ही गणश्याम तू तू ही रघुनंदन जय सिया राम तू ही रघु तू ही रघुनंदन जय सिया राम तू ही रघु हरिओ 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 चिन्मयानंद गुरु तुम्हे प्रणाम चिन्मयानंद गुरु तुम्हे प्रणाम जय तपोवन जी जय गुरु नाम जय तपोवन जी जय गुरु नाम जय हरिओ 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 तू ही ईश्वर तू ही महेश्वर ईश्वर तू ही महेश्वर तू ही परमेश्वर तू ही श्याम तू ही परमेश्वर तू ही श्याम हरिओ 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 Every community that has established roots in America, you find that as the successive generations come, they want to find out about their roots. When the very first generation came, what did they do? How did they live? All the way up to wherever or whatever generation they are in. So now I'm told that at least in Chennai Somnath there are a lot of younger people who have moved into United States in the last 10, 20 years. May or may not know how life was in the 60s. So I thought I would share with you a story from the 60s. Just for your information, I came to US in 1966, and in those days. we were not given green cards you couldn't apply for green card from india the only way to come some of you may know was to apply as a student 
and US government used to have what they call UCIS, United States, uh, I don't know what IS stands for, but information services. And they would help young students to get admission into US universities. And different people apply from all over. So four individuals who didn't know each other had all applied through UCIS and they all got admission in University of Michigan at Ann Arbor. One of them was Anand Gupta from Delhi. Other one was Hanuman Rao from Hyderabad. One was Pankaj Roy from Calcutta. And another one, Ashok Patel from Gujarat. And none of them knew each other all having studied in India in their mother tongue and after eighth grade, a little bit of English. So there was a lot of anxiety when they came as young students. Each had completed their bachelor's degree in India and around 21 years old, and they all came. And when you come there, the next day morning, that it's all timed in a manner that all the students from Australia, England, wherever you come, all foreign students get together in an auditorium like this. And the foreign student advisor would come and address everybody. And please think of it, middle class young individuals coming from India, not having a car or television at home. Here they are in America, awed by all the white people around, and they are sitting looking at each other and each thinking, oh, there is another deshi, oh, there is another deshi. <laughs> you know what I mean? And after all the orientation was over, the very first thing that was, all four of them run towards each other and say, hi, kaha se ho? where are you from? And started talking. And immediately they said, look, if we live in, live in dormitory, it is expensive. We don't have much money. If we can find out, let us room together. Thus began their journey as students. But remember, these are Indian students, bright, already have done their bachelor's in engineering in India. In no time, in two semesters, they got their master's. And all with, you know, pretty much 4.0 because they were brilliant. And these are the days when, you know, jobs were plentiful, you didn't have to really. So on campus, they would come around April to interview students. And lo and behold, all four of them got a job in Manhattan. And that was a big apple coming from India and getting a job in New York and staying. It is like dying and going to heaven for. <laughs> You know, just think of it growing up in India and thinking New York was just something you had imagined, you know. And here we are actually getting a job. They were ecstatic. After the interview and the jobs were offered, each said, hey, how much did they offer you? How much did they offer you? And each one of them was offered, I know the young people will laugh, $700 a month each, $8,400 a year. Today, you wouldn't even accept a job for anything, four dollars an hour. But that was a big salary in the 60s. So they were thrilled that, look, we have shared apartment here. Now we all have a job. And we come from ordinary families in India. We really haven't enjoyed within court life. So first six months of our life, let us live it up the New York way. You know, highest standard of living. And then, you know, we'll go back and save money, send money home and all that. So they started looking for an apartment. And here is a 45 story apartment complex. And they're talking to this manager, etc. He shows them apartment and he says, and I also have a penthouse apartment available. And they go to 45th story, two bedroom apartment, lavish, looking over the other burrows and the water. And, and they were so impressed. How much is the rent? He says, $700. <laughs> He says, well, 720, 800 minus taxes. Can we sign a six-month lease? 
He says, why not? And they signed the lease. Mind you, these are young individuals. Now they are 22. And if you remember in those days, typically parents have controlled you in college, etc. You could only do. Now they are earning how much? $700 each. They are in heaven. There is no mummy. There is no papa. <laughs> And between us, $2,800, we can really live it up. So every Monday morning, they would all get into the train and go to thus the whole month. And they had a program. Every Friday evening, they would take a train. And about a mile away from their apartment complex, there, was, there were only two or three Indian restaurants in those days, even in New York. So to this particular restaurant, they would go because they served South Indian, North Indian, East Indian, all different foods. So they would get together there and eat to their heart's content. Remember, these are young boys. And in those days, boys were not taught how to cook. So they make do. So Friday, they would really eat all they can. And of course, parents were away and they wanted to try. So they would have a couple of beers, etc. And so why not live it up? And thus, two, three months went. They collected some money. And once the pocket is little warm, whatever, then let us get a car between four of us. You know? So they decided to buy a car between four of them. And of course, in America, as you know, it's very easy to get a car. And every Friday, Monday through Thursday, they would go by train. But Friday, they would take their car. And Hanumantra, who had the job furthest, would drop the other three at their workplace. And coming back, he would pick them up. So it is late August. Hanumantra gets his jacket and puts it in the trunk. And he picks up one by one. And each one, because it is so hot, removes. These are the days when it was not casual. Everybody is wearing jacket and tie. They remove their jacket, tie, briefcase, put it in the trunk. And they arrive at this Indian restaurant. Around 8.30, quarter to 9, they had sumptuous dinner, couple of drinks. And they say, now let's go home. As they are leaving the parking lot, electricity in New York, in Manhattan, goes off. Now, when you are 22, electricity is off, lights are not on, and traffic, it is fun. Everybody is honking and all that, and there is nobody at home waiting. First 15 minutes, it was good. But even to go one mile from the restaurant, slowly temper started rising because it is hot, cars are not moving. Somehow or other, by 10, 15, they arrive at their apartment complex. And the doorman, along with another person, has a little cart. And when their car came, there were many other cars in front of them. And the doorman comes, they know, say, hi, sir, how are you? He says, look, as you know, electricity is not there. And the gate that electronically opens is not working, so you can't park your car. But don't worry. The management knows it is hot. So here are four napkins for you. Because you will sweat to go upstairs to your apartment. And when the electricity comes, I will park your car. You know, you boys go ahead. Now, even if you are 22 and pumping iron every day, after heavy meal, especially desi, eating a lot of rice and curry, 45 flights to <laughs> It's not easy by any stretch of imagination, is it? You know. But what can you do? So they said, let us make a pack, you know. All this time we have been really busy, busy, busy studying and now job and excited. But whenever you tell story, time goes fast. So we have 45 flights. If one of us can tell a story, minimum 12 stories, and the rest tell 11, by the time the last one finishes, we will be at our door, and we will be relaxed. Now, our Bengali Babu, Pankaj Roy, he says, let me go first. His other name would have been Chatterjee. 
but his name happens to be Pankaj Roy. And he starts telling, he says, look, it's not that I'm only Pankaj Roy. I know the real Pankaj Roy that everybody knows. Remember the cricketer? Yes. Some of the, at least few people agree with me. Am I the only old person? <laughs> Nari contractor and Pankaj Roy, our opening batsman. And he says, look, ah, thank you. He says, my family knew them very well and all this. And I used to get passes to go to stadium in Calcutta. And I, thus, he would build up story all the way. And before you know it, 15th flight, they are up there. And he's sweating, he was talking and going and wiping his face, etc. He says, and thus we met in Ann Arbor at the Foreign Student Advisor's office after his story. Then comes our Ashok Patel. He starts telling, he says, look, my parents had no money. We were very, very poor. Uh, we had no money even to buy an airplane ticket. So I came to Mumbai and then I came in a steamer. Then he started talking. He hadn't even seen a regular toilet and here in the steamer and then I met these people and you know then there was dance going on and I started dancing and thus this Kuchu Bhai was started telling how life suddenly changed for him. And before they know it, they are on 25th flight, 25th story. Now how many have gone? Two. And we have got 20 more flights to go. Anand Gupta, when his turn came, he had very, he was very proud of his background. He says, ah, it's your story, but you have no idea about my story. You know, Rajiv and Sanjeev, we used to play cricket and ball, Rajiv and Sanjeev meaning Indira's children. <laughs> We are so tied in with Nehru family, you know, they would not, they would come to our home and they would have dinner with us and we would go. Thus he built up like he has all this connection in Delhi, etc. He wouldn't stop, he kept on going, kept on going. And they are on 44th flight. Only one story remaining. And Hanuman Trav is quiet. He is not saying anything. So when they came to 44th flight and Anand Gupta stopped, Hanuman Trao started walking and these three caught hold of him. Hey, look, a deal is a deal. <laughs> right? Everybody has to tell a story. Hanuman Trao, you also have to tell a story. Hanuman Trao says, okay, I will tell you a story, but let us start walking. So they came another half a flight, 44 and a half. Hanuman Trao says, listen to my story. It is short but very important. He says, I picked each one of you. You took off your jacket. You took off your briefcase. You put it in the trunk. I was the only one driving. I gave my key to the doorman. Which one of you three will go down and get the key so we can go inside? <laughs> Now friends, on the other side of the door is a penthouse apartment. Refrigerator is loaded with Coke. In those days there were no Diet Coke, only Coke. Cold drinks are waiting for them. Because though the electricity is not there, refrigerator still is very cold. They can have an unparalleled view from their 45th flight. Light in the other boroughs, it would be very beautiful. But what was missing? is the key. You and I, the children of Hinduism, we are in America, we, our standard of living is so high, yet you ask anyone, our quality, I mean standard of living is beyond our dream when we were growing up in India, everyone would agree. You know, if you are from Mumbai, Calcutta, or wherever, any major city, small two, three bedroom apartment or a house, and look at what we have today. But do we all have key with us? The key is our scriptures. If we do not have this key, on the other side is all the enjoyment, yet we cannot enjoy it. This key is our scriptures. And what our scripture teaches, the topic of my, you might have read, is what? Quiet, alert, and vigilant. 
Now, why is it these four intelligent individuals, engineers, well respected in their company, but they were excited? Light is gone, what is happening, etc. Whenever mind is not quiet, when we are not quiet, we are not alert. So even though these are bright individuals, none of them thought that I want to carry my key with me. They made so much effort and it is worthless when they arrived up there. Now why am I telling this story to you? Whether you are going to Chinmaya Mission in Houston, in Somnath or Chinmayam or wherever, one thing you hear when in an informal satsang, it's talking, etc. It says, you know, we have been coming to Chinmaya Mission for 27 years. Some people will say for seven years, eight years. And you know, we have studied Swamiji is so good. Our teachers are good. And you know, I'm not the body. I'm not the mind. We have heard all these things, you know. But you know, we have a lot of knowledge and then there is always a but. But you know, I don't really feel the change in me. Sometimes they will find fault with the scriptures, you know, all these different things. But they would never ever say, but I, I don't know why I can't really feel that I am the Atma and I'm not the body, I'm not the mind, etc. Even this morning when we had satsang, a similar question had come up. And the reason, friend, is we are so caught up in our raga and dvesha. Likes and dislikes. And we know not that we have such strong likes and dislikes. So knowledge we all have, scriptural knowledge, our acharyas teach us, we have the knowledge. But knowledge alone does not help you and I. We have not learned the art of bringing this knowledge into our action. I'll give you a couple of examples. Okay? Nowadays, you know, we all have cell phones, isn't it? Now somebody invites you, hey, come to my home, we will, you know, so you go there at his home. And the guy is sitting across from you. And every two minutes, he just keeps looking at his cell. I mean, I'm sure everyone has experienced that one or other time. He keeps looking at his WhatsApp and uh, what is called SMS or Twitter, whatever they look at. They keep looking and sometimes even email. And you are talking, you almost feel insulted. Hey, why did you invite me? Now tell me, does the host have knowledge or not that it is not very polite when you invite somebody to not keep looking at your cell phone? You almost feel insulted. Now you go and you leave. You say, oh, he invited me. Now what our dvesha, dislike. I was invited, but he insulted me. Right? The host, it is his raga for what? For the text messages, etc. He is so involved with it. You are important, but more important is my messages. All the knowledge that he has, both of them, the host, that was not polite, the knowledge that I should be polite and I shouldn't look at my phone is of no use to him. The other person having understood I am Atma, people behave the way, he feels very insulted. Again, the knowledge of scriptures doesn't help him. See? And many of us seated here, including myself, right? Who among us doesn't know that when we drive, we should not be using cell phone. We know when others are driving and when they're talking, etc., they slow down, etc. Right? So who does have the knowledge that we have to be careful not to use it? But how many of us can put our hand on our heart and say, I never talk while driving? I never tell me. So friends, knowledge, no matter how much you and I have, does not really help. There are three kinds of people. One are Sant Mahatmas who have risen above likes and dislikes. They are not bothered by likes and dislikes because it doesn't bother them. They see likes coming. They see dislikes coming. Raga and Dvesha, but it doesn't touch them. Majority of the worldly people, they only run after Raga and Dvesha, isn't it? Where my Raga is fulfilled, I want to go and enjoy. If the sanjog, if the circumstances are not anukul, not conducive, I run away. 
if they are pratikul i run away if it's anukul enjoyable i want to this is a typical sansari you and i before we join in my mission right that the world is where i want to and we are tossed around by raga and dvesha likes and dislikes but that was the life we knew little bit of sukhi dukhi dukhi sukhi dukhi 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 that was our autobiography isn't it but now we have come to chinmaya mission every sunday your acharya priya rahul ji swami ji here teaches us etc rise above likes it now we have become sadhak our goal is i want to be like a sant or mahatma to rise above likes and dislikes in other words a sansari acts only to fulfill his kamna desires and wants to when his kamna is fulfilled he develops mamta this is mine i open i want this i don't want to share with anybody else and if it goes away he is very sad sant mahatma sarabhavit and you and i in the middle the sadhak we work in the same world live in the same world but our objective is to do the same thing but make sincere efforts to rise above likes and dislikes kamnas are there but don't get attached to it so we struggle but if we are not alert all the knowledge doesn't help in houston right one doctor has three don't tell anybody in houston okay i'm telling you i would think okay just between 300 of you and me <laughs> three children two son and a daughter right 12 or 13 days from today is thanksgiving day isn't it the children are between 35 and 45 married themselves having couple of kids and the understanding is every other year my children with their spouse and children will come home for thanksgiving and the following year they go to the in-laws place so this 22nd or 24th wherever that uh, the thursday thanksgiving day these two boys with their wives and daughter and son in law were to come home for thanksgiving father is calling last week to the son in la he says daddy everything is booked this is the timing i am coming at this time daughter is in east coast she says daddy i am coming daddy is really happy and then he calls his son in tulsa Oklahoma beta you must be driving with your what time are you driving etc he says daddy i don't know how to tell you but uh, we are going to geeta's parents home in dallas we, we will not be coming home and daddy is furious now who is he who comes every sunday to chin my mission <laughs> sadak rag and dwesh equanimous i am atma but what happens think of it just like those four engineers if our mind is not quiet it is not alert and when it is not alert it is not vigilant enough vigilant enough we would do things we normally would not do father gets raging mad we had a, immediately starts thinking that geeta my daughter in law i knew he has married a wrong girl and all, <laughs> all these things he always manipulates my son and you know now that everything is come last year you went there again and all this father is raging mad and he says forget it we'll talk later and he hangs up you know now the son knows me very well also he is hurt that his father is also hurt now he calls me and he says gaurang uncle i need your help he says i can't tell my father why i am not coming but my mother in law just two weeks ago was diagnosed with a diagnosis with a disease where my doctor has said if she is lucky she will be here for 3 months if everything works out maybe 6 months so geeta's parents have said let us not share this news with anybody until after thanksgiving because they don't want any phone calls anything so the family can be together now the son he is genuine he cannot share but the father is raging mad friends you and i who go to chinmay mission regularly i'm not putting chinmay mission down down but i want you to think no matter how much knowledge you and i have if we are not quiet if we are not alert 
In other words, when the situation is occurring, if we immediately do not catch ourselves, the knowledge remains in one place. We get caught up with Raga Dvesa. Now think of it. There are so many who only have one son or one daughter. And their daughter is coming for Thanksgiving. They are happy. One daughter, their children. Some people have two children and they are married. Two kids are coming with spouses. They are happy. This guy is lucky. He has three, but two are coming. He should be happy. What happens to him? <laughs> His mind is the third one did not come. Wife is manipulative. Parents immediately dwesa takes over. You and I, if we are not careful, friends, our rag and dwesha, likes and dislikes, we are being tossed around continuously. And if we are not quiet, if we are not alert, if we are not vigilant enough, the minute a negative thought dress comes, please understand, it comes to every one of us. Lust comes to everyone. Anger comes to everyone. Let it come up to here. But as it is rising, if you say, look, this is rising. What am I studying? Equanimous, I should not. Be alert. Immediately turn to Krishna. Hey, Bhagwan, help me. You just now heard chapter 3 from the children. You know, selected verses from chapter 3. Hey, Krishna. Arjun is asking the same question to Krishna in chapter 3. Why does a human being uh, act, uh, even though he wants to be good, why can he not be good? And Bhagwan explains the same thing. He says, Raga is, you know, Kama is, Krodha is, Raga and Dves, Kama and Krodha is catching us. So friends, unless we are quiet, unless we are alert as it is rising, you and I can make no progress in spiritual life. We can not only come this entire life to Chinmaya Mission, next life also Chinmaya Somnath will be here. <laughs> Chinmayam will be here. <laughs> it is not the fault of the scriptures. It is not the fault of the teachers. But unless I decide to change, nothing will change. Friends, please understand this. Don't say that, look, I've been going for 20 years and really things are not changing. Not changing because in all honesty, you and I have made no efforts. While we are here listening to Rahul Ji, Priya Ji or Chinma and listening to Swami Ji, this is so good, very good. But you get into your car, turn on the engine and you give Guru Dakshina everything that has been taught. Swami Ji, you keep it. <laughs> it's okay. And please, you think of it. How many times have you decided, I want to meditate, this, etc. But you enter their home, that home of yours, and life is again back to normal, right? The same iPad, the same, and you are Bhagwan Sankaracharya, what is the time I can't see? Do I have a few more minutes? Or? Bhagwan Sankaracharya has given very, very beautiful lines, and I'll conclude with these four. He says, Pranayamam Pratyaharam, Nitya Nitya Viveka Vicharam, Japya Sameta Samadhi Vidanam, Kuru Avadanam Mahadvadanam. Kuru Avadanam, take great care, meaning what? Be quiet, be alert, and be vigilant. He gives you and I the entire key how to live. Knowledge is very important, but knowledge, if it is not digested, and if it doesn't come through my action, it is of no use. And Sankaracharya gives us what you and I should do. Please understand, do not drop it after turning your ignition key in the car. This is to be taken home and to be done by us. He says, Pranayamam Pratyaharam. Pranayam, not Kapalbhati. Please understand. Okay. You can do it. But that is Sankaracharya devotee. Live a life of moderation. Remember, you are not sannyasi except one. Okay. You are living a regular life. You have a job, etc. So don't suddenly decide, I'm going to keep my own whole week, etc. It's not going to happen. 
you know live a life of moderation no excess moderation meaning you sleep enough hours don't decide that i'm going to wake up at 3:30 and start meditating at 4 you will do it one day and curse yourself the rest of the week <laughs> live a moderate life pranayamam but most important friends pratyaharam prati ahar this is where you and i people working in the world etc who gets exposed to everything in the world if we are so careless we talk at the mission hari om hari om swami ji hari om how are you bas bhagwa aapki krupa hai swami ji right but it is only up to parking lot pratyaharam is what what comes in like today it was very cold how many of you had your windows open at home why not because it is so cold outside i don't want the cold air to come in and i feel shiver right so you keep your windows closed similarly all the unnecessary things you know 30 years ago it was newspaper and magazines like playboys then came television and television brought garbage now you don't even need television now it is in our pocket <laughs> think of it if you and i are not careful friends and i mean it with all sincerity i talk to so many people just like swami ji etc some of the young people coming from good family well educated going to the wrong sites on the web father of two children himself 45 50 years old having a 20 year old girl and still when he is at office and some colleagues are together looking at some 20 25 year old young uh, woman they make a nasty remark and he keeps looking at her what's that he doesn't realize at that time because he's not quiet enough that look my daughter is also 20 years old somebody else may be looking at my daughter with lusty eyes would i like that see pratyahar meaning what even though the lust rises up to here detect it the only way you will detect is when you are quiet when you are quiet you are alert hey i have to live by principle remember i told you about three people sansari he will look at that girl with the lusty eyes because his happiness is there he has kamna sant mahatmas are not affected but you and i the sadhak i have now decided i want to live by principle what do the scriptures teach difficult as it is fight the struggle within but once you look at her don't look at her again i don't want to look at her because if i keep looking lust will rise and i am a sadhak sadhak must live by principle he has no choice if he wants to progress thus with a quiet mind and alert mind you are vigilant enough to kick those thoughts out of your mind this is called pratyahar because world will bring things to you it is up to us to keep our windows down because it is windy outside it is cold outside cold air if it comes you can turn on your heater but lust will trouble you even when she is gone i'm just giving you one example but there are so many things that you know where your lust is somebody's weakness may be wealth dollars right most of us came to america for what to go to chinmay mission <laughs> right i mean when we left india our mantra was what dollar ay namaha i mean let us be honest you know so the weakness may be for wealth but pratyahar that i earn with dharma of course but if it is a dharma catch yourself if this is not right pranayamam pratyaharam nitya nitya vivek vicharam the highest nitya nitya is i am the atma everything else is anatma but at our level nitya is i want mere man ki shanti i want quietude whenever my mind is agitated when lust rises when i am caught up by raga and dvesha likes and dislike kama and krodh comes and i my balance my mind is no longer quiet and i want to be quiet because that is where the joy is so be alert and anything that will bring raga and dvesha be alert 
this is anitya it comes and goes why is it anitya if you have grandchildren right if you are 60 plus or if you have children and you are 30s in your 30s right little children what do they do mom i hate you when mom says no you are not doing it mom i hate you right dwesha right 31st of october right you took your children out to trick or trick right now remember your seven year old worked for two and a half hours sweating and toiling for those candies remember it's a job for him now what happens he comes home and he, all this you are only going to get one per day and that also when mom tells you now remember to this seven year old he doesn't even know what the word rakshasi is <laughs> But in his heart, what is it? This Raksasi of a lady, I worked for two and a half hours. She just stood by the curbside. It was me who had to wear all this costume, not trick or treat. They gave me, and she says, only one? I hate you, mom. Right? And again, next day something happens. Mom, I love you. You are the best. So Raga and Dvesa, they come and go. I am not going to succumb to it. I am going to be a witness of Raga and Dvesa. Only when you are quiet and alert. Please understand, it will rise, so don't run away. If you don't like potato, you will not like potato even after becoming a Vedantin. <laughs> Raga and Dvesa, but its effect will go away. So then with this, Sankaracharya says, once you have relatively become quiet, now the time has come to do japa and very quickly because in the morning also they ask like this question japa is nothing but a repetition of mantra but every one of us what is our experience om namah shivaya om namah shivaya i wonder after the event what is for dinner at chinmay somna today om namah mind does not have the simple way not to allow your mind to escape, friends. Japa, to make it very, very simple, Japa. The second the mantra ends, start the next one. Don't leave even a millisecond. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Om. Japa, continuous one after other. Your mind does not get a chance to escape. And then what happens when you chant it for a sufficiently long period of time, your mind itself will become quiet, right? Mothers know this very well, right? You have to admit that majority of you mothers are not Lata Mangeshkar, are you? Right? But still, when your child is three years old and in your life, right? What do you do? Ah, ah, or you sing some native, if you are Gujarati, you sing something in Gujarati. And you keep repeating the same line, ah out of sheer repetition and boredom <laughs> your child says what enough of this mummy it is better that i sleep <laughs> right in the same way when the same om namo bhagavate vasudevaya you keep repeating there is nothing exciting i surrender at the feet of krishna slowly slowly what happens mind will become quiet and it is this quiet mind, once you have developed the habit, will be alert when Raga comes, when Dvesha comes, you will be able to catch yourself. How does Chapa work? Bhagwan Ram Krishna Paramahams beautifully explains. Some of you are old enough, so you remember the days when we used to have fountain pen. Remember pilot pen in India? which we used to write and when we were mad at the guy sitting in front of us. <laughs> now when the ink pot is empty, right, we didn't throw it away like America. We would put some clean water, again put the cap, shake it and you empty it and blue water comes out. You do it six times, what happens? The ink pot is completely clean. And now comes the clean water out, isn't it? Chapa for our mind is like water going into the dirty ink pot. Right now our mind is with Raga and Tvesha. Don't be afraid. Sankaracharya says, you with faith repeat your mantra. 
the mantra will go in like the clean water and will push out your lust, your raga and dvesa. Have faith and do it for a sufficiently long period of time. Once you have learned to be quiet, alert and vigilant, now you and I are ready for meditation. And meditation is nothing but the same mantra that you have for use to devta. But now instead of the mantra ending and starting even, Om Namah Shivai. The mantra is I am. Now mantra is over. Next mantra has not yet come. But I am very much there. And Swamiji and Chinmayam tells us again and again what? Tattvamasi. That silence between the two chant, you are. Try it again and again. Before you know it, you sit down and two or three times. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. And your mind becomes absolutely still. And what do you and I realize? That silence that I am experiencing is the same silence that my wife is experiencing. Everybody at Chinmayam, everybody at Somnath, when they meditate and their mind is quiet, they experience the same. We are all one, like Swamiji says, as a gold and ornament. We are all one. So how do I act if we are one? Friends, please pay attention. Just as sitting here from head to toe, this is me. Every part of my body, heart is not lungs, lungs is not stomach, stomachs are not kidney. But each one of them know one thing, what? I am an integral part of the total, isn't it? So even if the kidneys don't function right, Heart doesn't say, look, if kidneys are not doing the job, I tell you, I'm not going to pump blood anymore. <laughs> no. Some of you men, if you are like me, remember, before we surrender to God, we have, whether we like it or not, we have to surrender to our wife. <laughs> so some days when the temperature is good, etc., Darsana will say, you know, Shri, she calls me, Shri, go and get bread or, you know, some milk. And it's a nice day, 72 degrees humidity. So I walk down to nearby store and I pick up half a gallon of milk. And then she calls, you know, I forgot baby banana. I went to you. Why don't you get two gallons of milk? Now for her, it is only to say, but two gallons is eight and a half multiplied by two, 17 pounds at 71 years age. <laughs> He's not that easy to carry. So I'm carrying these two gallon both things. And after walking 30 steps, right hand says, I'm tired. But does the right hand ever have to say, oh, lefty, can you please help me out? Can you please carry it? No, the right hand is tired. It gives the uh, grocery back to the left hand. And left hand starts carrying. There is no please or anything. Why? Because left hand knows I'm as much a part of this body as the right hand. If the right hand is weak, I am ready to help. If my right eye is weak, the left eye is ready to see the vision. In the same way, as an integral part of this community, I am ready to serve Chinmay Somnath. I am ready to serve Chinmay Mission Washington Regional Center. I don't care what others do. Just like if the kidneys are not working, stomach doesn't say I will stop digesting. I don't look at what others do. I will do my level best and give my seva physically, tan, man, and tan. I will support. Now, why should we support for this fundraiser? Fresh answer. Majority of you here are working people. By majority, practically everybody. Swami is also working. Only thing is he is not paid. <laughs> right? Everybody else we are paid. Now, what is our thinking? I have worked hard enough. I've got money in 401k and my IRA and my taxable account and all these things. I have also worked just like you until you know, 10, 12 years ago. And it is human that whatever I have, I want to keep it. I don't put it in safe deposit box because it depreciates. Where do we put it? With Charles Schwab, Fidelity, Vanguard, one of the mutual fund investment, right? Not only that, when I buy mutual fund, they invest it, but they have half a percent, 0.7, 0.8 percent expenditure, isn't it? 
if I invest through fidelity, etc., even they charge me for investment fee. But I still put it there and not in my mattress or safe. Why? Because the money increases. Money, if not invested, will depreciate. And then I want to leave behind what I don't use for my children. It is a natural human quest that I want my children to be happy. And the wealth that I have created, I want to pass it on to my children. And you are right. But don't forget, you and I collectively also have a wealth. And that is called Rishi Vidya, our Upanishads. Bhaja Govindam, Atma Bodh, Bhagavad Gita, Upanishads, all the things. You saw the children chanting so beautifully. This is our collective wealth. Ramayana doesn't belong to anyone. Bhagavad doesn't belong to anyone. It belongs to all of us. And it is Rishi Vidya, our collective inheritance. Just like my dollars and cents in my 401k, I invest so that it passes on to my children upon my death. This Rishi Vidya is so sacred that when my children inherit the money and their standard of living goes up, this Rishi Vidya will help them by raising their standard of living. And the only way the Rishi Vidya can be given, Saraswati, there is no charge for Saraswati. But to invest Saraswati and to dispense it to these children and to adults, we need house of worship. Such a beautiful place, Chinmay Somnath. Chinmayam is also growing with the land, etc. This house of worship, just like the cost of investment, so that my investment will grow. The Saraswati, the Vidya, unless it is invested and given to our children in library, in Georgetown or in uh, Berkeley or Stanford, they all have Vedas, but it does nothing. In library, it is like putting it in a safe deposit box. But when we invest it, the children learn, they pass it on in your Balviya teachers, Swamiji, Acharya Priyaji and Rahulji. They are all working day and night to do this. And it is only right. Like my body, every part is ready to serve the rest of the part. As an integral part of this Chinmaya, a mission, Washington DC area. Every one of us should be ready. What can I do as part of this body to support? What I would really urge you is friends, every dollar is important. $51, $101, but let's be honest. $51, $101 in our Texas, it ain't going to do much, <laughs> right? See, there are some among us who cannot do any more, do 51 and 101. But let's be honest. I have worked, so I know. I took early retirement at 54, but I have also worked. Most of us Indians, no matter whether you are Brahmin or what, we are at heart, banya. <laughs> let's be honest, you know. Majority of us, depending on how many years we have worked, we are well taken care of, you know. None of us have to worry that tomorrow morning rice and dal will come from where. Okay. So those among us who can afford, who have invested and have succeeded, market is doing good, etc. If you can write a check for 50,000, I know many of you can do it. It's a matter of having a vision, not living like a sansari only for me. Sant Mahatmas, they have only spiritual wealth. But I, the sadhak, who has to live by principle, I am going to share what I have. I can't take it with me. My children are well educated with good job. Let us share it. Some among you, 100,000, 200,000. Before you know it, I know your debt is pretty high. If we do this every year for next five years and have a target that I will do my very best, not minimum, but maximum, before we know it, you know, if I'm still alive, I ask you to invite me so that we can celebrate that now this property and Chinmayam are debt-free. Wouldn't you want that? At least clap.
फ्रेंड्स आई नो यू कैन डू इट एंड दिस इज नॉट हवाई किल्ला इन यूज टर्न आई एम टेलिंग यू एंड आई एम नॉट ब्रेगिंग बट वी हैव नो डैट Gurudev told me in early when we were just he says temple should have no debt gavrang find so he, these are his words i'm not kidding he says find some good gujarati business people <laughs> he says tell them to help you and sant mahatma's words can never go wrong when we were looking for a land one gentleman came and he says gavrang bhai don't worry I am behind. I will give you twenty-five thousand now, but if there is any shortfall, I will help you. We have never had to go to him for shortfall, but he has always been there. And every time we built and added something, the day we inaugurated, it has been paid for. Of course, here it was new; it is major, so it is understandable that we have debt. But now that three or four hundred families are coming here every Sunday. you can do it it's not much but if each one of us wait that what is other doing you know then nothing that is almost like your kidney is waiting that if the heart is going to pump then i will function before you know it you can collapse but work like the body i don't care i don't even want to know what others are doing but i am going to do my very best i know you can do it be quiet be alert be vigilant when that banya vrutti rises no i don't want to give vigilant kick it out <laughs> and write that check so that our chinma mission washing and regional center become that free thank you so very much for listening to me thank you